back to the Minds of an Interior Designer. Today on the podcast is the amazing Amy from Glossy Interiors. Hello, Hello thank welcome. you for having me on. Well, thank you for coming on. I'm absolutely honoured and thank you for bringing these stunning cushions. Oh, you're welcome. They're Enjoy them. They're absolutely gorgeous and they match the sofa perfectly. Well, you did send me a picture, so I had yeah. a little bit of something to work with, didn't I? It yeah, wasn't exactly. totally blind. So I met you it must have been, was it like two years ago, actually? It, it was, was January 2020, so just before the whole lockdown COVID, thing. yeah. Oh, my God. 18 we went months to, like, ago. that interior event, didn't we? Which was amazing. Tara, number 18 interiors, yes. yeah. She's become, like, one of my closest friends since She's then. Amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. She's fab. Well, since then, obviously, you have grown massively. And I'm sure everyone listening wants to know why you started your business, how it's going, and how you've become such an amazing entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know about amazing entrepreneur, but I'm, try- I'm trying, <laughs> just giving it a go. Um, the business started, it wasn't planned or anything. The business, this is my fourth business. So okay. for anyone watching out there, it hasn't like, you know, I haven't stumbled across this and I've it's gone great firsthand. I've had failed businesses before this and yeah. this is the fourth business that I started at the age of 27 it's nearly three years old now so yeah 27 um and I was in partnership with someone else previously to that and that was bespoke furniture yeah um this person had started this business and um was looking for people to have franchises of it so me and my partner at the time invested in the business um you know it all seemed amazing you know again on Instagram it can look great but yeah sometimes you sold a dream aren't you yeah. um Without going into too much detail, it ended very badly, didn't last long at all, lost lots of money um, and showed me everything that a business shouldn't be, basically. Um, So we had to walk away from that within six months of investing. um, And at the end of that, my partner at the time was like, look, do you not think like you should get a nine to five now? Do you not think you can kind of like get your head out of the clouds a bit, you know, get a real job? Because obviously previous businesses to that hadn't worked. Get a real job, not worse. Um, (laughs) So I was like, no, like, I'm going to go again. Like, I've enjoyed the bespoke furniture thing. Yeah. Didn't have any experience in um, furniture or soft furnishings or anything like that. Enjoyed that. um, But there's quite a lot of risk involved with that in terms of, you know, if a cushion goes wrong, it only cost me, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds to fix it. Whereas if a bed, bespoke bed goes wrong at three grand, it's a lot of money. So I thought maybe not do that on my own. And I didn't want to do that after what had happened. Um, but I loved interiors and I obviously I like doing up my own home and things like that. But other than that, I'd had no experience. And I was looking for some cushions for our new apartment at the time. And you know, you had your next, which yeah, uh, everyone's you see got. everyone's got, yeah. yeah. Or you had like really, really expensive ones on such websites, um, about a hundred pound a cushion. And I just thought there's nothing in the middle here that is like luxury, but affordable. Yeah. Um, So at the time, obviously we'd had that business that had failed. Um, I had no money whatsoever. I started it, no joke, with the last 150 pounds to my name, this business. So I bought some fabric. Um, First of all, found some on eBay and other sites. And I took it to the lady that used to fix my dresses. And I said, could you make me some cushions? I'm thinking about maybe selling them. So at the start, it started on piecework. Um, obviously I didn't have a clue how this was going to go, you know, didn't have any expectations as such, but I thought I'll give it a go. I don't yeah. think there's anyone out there really like me at the time. Um, obviously more have come since then, but at the time, like I would say we were one of the first. I think you was, because when I remember when I first started my page and you were on there, I had never seen. Yeah, anything. like the bespoke yeah, cushions. definitely. Um, so I, I'm not going to say we were the first, but I think we were definitely one, one of the of, first. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, so that's how it kind of happened. I got some done and I went to my friend's house who had a nice house um, and I took some pictures of them, put them online and it didn't happen overnight. Like it definitely wasn't yeah. an overnight success. I remember you put teasers on your Instagram and everything, don't you? Like with yeah. this, you know, launching soon, keep tuned in. And I did that for quite a few weeks before my official <laughs> website launch, yeah. if you will, which was just me making Everyone my own Shopify. Toast. Um, and it took me two weeks to get a sale from launching. I did not get a sale like first day. I thought maybe I might get one sale. I'd be happy with one sale on the first day. And it took me two weeks to get one sale. And that was quite disheartening because I'd had so many people asking, when is your website going to launch? Can't wait to buy. I thought even one of my friends might have bought (laughs) one, but no, no one. (laughs) I know. So two weeks went by and eventually we got um, an order come through from this girl called Kelly. I remember exactly what she ordered and everything. And I remember like literally dancing around uh, and so excited to get our first sale. And I thought, somebody actually does want the product. It's not just a pipe dream. (laughs) Um, So yeah, that was in 
September, well, end of August, September 2018. So it's nearly three years old now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh my God, I love that story. I feel like I'm with, like, you know, when you hear all these stories, like from like celebrities and I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's such an amazing story. So yeah, it wasn't planned. There was no business plan involved. Um, I went to uni, but I did um, event management and fashion buying. So I did fashion for a few years, was in fashion buying industry. Uh, didn't love it. Always knew that I wanted my own business. So I'd try and set yeah. businesses up on the side. But I think in terms of like actually proper going for a business, I think you've got to give it your all. Yeah. So then eventually I was in a limb where I'd left a job and um, I had the time to obviously try and make a go with something. But at first I was going to buy and sell products like a lot of other websites. And then I eventually had the cushion idea. Yeah. But after the back of the failed business, I knew that I still definitely wanted to do something interiors. And I didn't know whether I was just going to buy and sell products. But then obviously the the thought of, oh, I've not seen that anywhere, so I'll do that is how it came about. That's the best way sometimes to feel like, oh, there's a gap in the market. Yeah. Quickly get in there. And it's really hard to find one. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, it's not in the gap in the market now because quite a few more have come along since, yeah. since Glossy launched, which there's enough business for everyone. So yeah, 100%. That's but, great. I mean, I am going to be biased. Like, <laughs> I love your ones. I think the thing that sets us apart, um, it's hard to tell on a picture as well, yeah. which is quite hard and frustrating, but it's the weight of the cushions and the quality of the cushions. Anything can kind of look great on Instagram, like even a picture of yourself or whatever, you can put yeah. a filter on it, you can edit it. But you, with fabrics and with soft furnishings and with interiors in general, I don't think you can like appreciate the true beauty of a product until you physically got it in your hands 100%. and you can see the makeup of it. I mean, yeah. they're all handmade. Um, they're all like finished to the finest of standards, luxury fabrics and the key ingredient to ours, which makes us different from anyone else is our fill in. Yeah. So sometimes when I see people order covers only, I'm like, oh, but you're not going to achieve the same Rocky look. Mistake. <laughs> you know, if you just spend that little bit extra, which you're probably going to end up spending anyway yeah. by getting your inserts from Dunelm or somewhere else, like you won't get that same look no, because Arda made bespoke to us yeah. to a certain weight and everything. No, so they're absolutely gorgeous. I can confirm they are very weighty, the gorgeous. Yeah. And you get the the karate chop. I mean, it's all, all the clients say it's like a morning workout because average <laughs> someone would have on the bed is about five or six. So they weigh 2.5 <laughs> kilo each. So you're moving every day oh at the God. end of the day. And then obviously... You don't need the gym the morning, with these cushions. No, do a glossy workout. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. So with your fabrics, just to everyone, because do you, make, do you have like a set like print selection, just bring out different ones or do you let the whoever your client is pick like a bespoke at the start it um it started where I was buying very little so you know obviously I didn't have cash flow at the start of the business so I'd buy like five meters of a fabric or yeah. 10 meters of fabric so we'd buy 10 cushions or 20 cushions and then that would go because I was buying end of line fabrics at the time when we started quite a few years ago but the business has completely changed since then yeah. we're investing in full roles and we're you know we're organizing deals with suppliers of fabrics to I'll buy this much you know to, to get a good price yeah. um because they are very luxury fabrics what we use so the only yeah. way that we can sell them for the price that we sell them at is by bulk buying the fabric. So yeah. now we kind of do two or three like big launches a year and then we'll drip free feed like a few styles here and there. Yeah. But we don't change the range as much as what we used to when we first started because obviously the fabrics came and went quite yeah. a lot. And because they were end of line, you can't get them again. Yeah. Um, I don't personally have any like bespoke fabrics for a client because again, that's quite time consuming for me yeah. to go out there and pick, pick a, find a fabric, spend four hours finding a fabric yeah. for two cushions. It's just not worthwhile. No. Um, of course, a lot of clients send us pictures because we don't offer fabric samples as well. We just can't with like obviously a small team. The ladies have got the head down sewing all day. Yeah. Don't have that like in how at the moment, you know, not, not to say that might change in the future, but don't have that um, free time to do all the fabric samples. Yeah. But we must get asked about 50 times a day. Oh, really? Yeah, that's oh, like wow. the common question. But obviously I'll offer my time for free. So if you want to send me a picture of your room, yeah. then I'll say, you know, and a lot of people, as soon as they receive them, are like, thank you so much for your recommendations. You were spot on. And yeah kind of can see like if they tell me the vibe and what the accessory colors are and what they want to stay away from or if they want to just include a touch of black we'll put it on the pipe and then obviously I'm I don't know I'm going to get a sale from it but I'll give my time to yeah. anyone that inquires yeah 
for that. Oh, I love that. I feel like yours are quite an investment piece, though, as you're saying about the weight, and it doesn't matter, I feel like, if they're not as such as a bespoke fabric because all of your cushions are absolutely gorgeous i feel like once you've got them you've kind of got them with yours like as you're saying before like obviously i'm offense but like if you get them from next i feel like yeah. you do need to refresh them quite yeah often. seasons I feel like change these not so much yeah. in a good way, do you know what I mean? yeah of course so uh, normally like obviously we get new customers every single week but we have a vast amount of returning customers you know, some customers have placed 20 orders and spent wow. ex- in excess of £5,000 with us. Wow. Um, and it's because they'll get them cushions. It might be for the sofa. It might be for the master bedroom. And they're like, they get them out and they're like, I cannot have anything else but this. Like, yeah. I put them next to that cushion that I had before. <laughs> yeah. And it's just not comparable. Just wilted cushions. So they up. become addicted. So on the reviews a lot, you'll see like, beware, you will get addicted because it, you can't really compare it to anything else. Yeah. Um, that's not me being biased. It's just... You can't compare my my cushion to a, a 12 or 15 pound cushion because it's a totally different product. Yeah. So of course it is an investment piece. And I think the same, you know, the amount of people that order sets every single day, like 300 pound for a set of cushions for your bed, might even be more than what the bed cost. Yeah. But it's the game changer as you walk into the room. It's the feature. Oh, 100%. I always think like, even when I'm doing someone's space, the finishing touches. Yes. They make the beds. Of course like, they do. As you were saying before, you didn't know whether to do like bespoke beds and things like that. If a bed's nice, yeah, it's nice. But until you put them finishing yeah, touches on it. and mm-hmm. you do like the gorgeous throws as well to match yeah. the set it's Definitely. the whole vibe and you don't like need a fancy five thousand pound bespoke bed no. you can get you know a, a, a normal standard bed yeah um and you can dress it up with some cushions and you've got that hotel vibes look you don't need to spend thousands of pounds on the bed like you said it is about the finishing touches yeah. you definitely give the hotel vibes at your product <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love Well, them. I think glossy, obviously, with most uh, business owners, I think if you're true to yourself and you want to make a, a great success of it, it's something that you love. Yeah. And it's, you know, I would never send anything out my door, like out the doors of our head office that I wouldn't have in my home. Yeah. So it's very much when I'm picking fabrics and I'm thinking about new collections, you know, my taste is very, I think I am very much my customer. Yeah. Um, our target customers are anywhere between early 20s to 40s, 50s. And the women, mainly women, I'd say 95% women yeah. that would uh, like the nicer things in life but don't want to be ripped off and uh, like take pride in their home. Yeah. They're the kind of customers that we have and we'll invest in it. Like some people would never even dream of spending £50 on a cushion and I totally get that. But it's the excitement that our type of customer gets when they un- unbox that. Like yeah. you have a love for interiors and yes. soft furnishings and a lot of obviously our clients do. And it's like Christmas day when the parcels come yeah, because it's something that they truly love. Like guys probably are with, I don't know, new football t-shirts yeah. or aftershaves. <laughs> like that's what women are like with cushions. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and they always smell amazing. Yes. So you are very much eye for detail and also yes. eye for the smell of when you open it. It's the whole experience of Definitely. your product as well. Do you know what? It's quite hard to make um, a real nice product experience. I mean, some of the brands I was I love and still follow and have followed for years are like House of CB. That moment that, you know, again, it's an investment piece. It's not something that you, it's for that special occasion. Yeah. You open it up and you get that nice tissue paper, you get that nice box. But because they're such bul- bulky products, it's hard to make yeah. it like a nice unboxing experience. I can't tissue wrap them. They're no. tear through. <laughs> Um, they're just with the sheer weight of them. So by having that smell, as soon as you open the box, and that's one of the only touches really that we can yeah. um, do. To but make I know, but experience. I love that touch because I feel like, na- like when you get them, it smells in the room for about a million yeah. years, doesn't it? So the brand, um, I'll just big up SH Scent here. We've collaborated on a scent of our own. So we Ooh, have always... Tia. For anyone watching <laughs> we have always um since a couple of months of starting i had the idea of i wanted to smell spray the products like uh when you're going to Joe malone they'll spray the bag or tom ford they'll spray the bag yeah even though you're buying the product they'll still spray the bag with a scent and it's that scent when you obviously open it when you get home i loved the idea of that so sabrina from sh scent i don't know if i reached out to her or she reached out to me again has become another instagram like friend. friend um and we both bounce off each other's business so i've always purchased them from her to use and then i came up with the idea like late last year it took quite a, a while to fulfill it but because of covid that i wanted my own scent that yeah they, you know because i'm always directing business her way and i still will yeah. but the glossy scent yeah and um, so that's the one that we've uh, devised and we only launched it about three weeks ago oh. so again it's quite hotel spa vibes the scent it is it's gorgeous um so it's 
sandalwood, um, coconut, and peach. So it's really nice. Oh, gorgeous! Absolutely love it. It does smell amazing. I can I can confirm that. <laughs> Yeah, it smells amazing. Um, so can you give anyone, like, maybe a home? Because as you say, you didn't want to go into, like, that nine to five, and I'm very much like like that. Like, some people just, that that's not their path. Yeah. So what would you say about people who, like, just go for it? Like, you didn't have a sale for two weeks, but I just feel like that shouldn't stop you, and you should. Yeah. Like, now your business is booming, you've got all these sales. So, like, what do you say to people? Like, what do you think they should do? I think the only, like, term of failure is never trying. So don't be scared of failure. I think that is, you know, the forefront of people stopping pursuing the dreams of having a business in something that they're totally passionate about. So don't be scared of failing. If it doesn't work out, you'll find something else. It might not work out first time around, but think of all the things that you will learn from that that you can take forward to your next venture. But one thing I will say, which kind of will determine if it is successful or not, is you have to be truly passionate about it. Yeah, you have to have a love for it. If you're getting up at 5 a.m., like for the first 18 months of the business, and I'm sure many people that own businesses will say the same, like you have hardly any cash flow unless you had investors or, you know, you're very fortunate friends and family have invested in your business. I had nothing. So you've got to love it if you're working on it from 5, 6 a.m. till midnight at night because it's got to get you out of bed in the morning. And it doesn't feel like work because I love it. Yeah. So again, you've got to be passionate about it. And with you saying about the two weeks of not having a sale, it's consistency. Yeah. You know, I could have given up on that first week. Oh, no one's interested in it. I'll just gift them all to my family and move on to something else. But it's consistency and it's not an overnight success and it yeah. never will be. It takes sheer graft yeah. and hard work. And, you know, times of not seeing your friends and family, times of saying, I can't afford to come on that holiday. You know, I can't come out tonight. I've got to do some work nothing great comes from like a comfortable place you're gonna have to be uncomfortable for a little while to achieve great things or be on your way to achieving great things so I'd say definitely passion and consistency and number ones and just go for it there's never going to be a right time you can read as many books as you want do as many courses as you want I'm still learning every single day yeah you know I'll be faced with new challenges for years and years to come I don't know it all yeah I don't have a specific talent I just I have talented people that work for me. They're they're the talented ones in the room, not me. I'm the one that can pull it all together, obviously market it and be passionate about it. But I don't have a true talent as such. So you're going to have to do everything when you start this business. I don't know whether it be, let's just say it's an e-commerce business, for for example. You're going to have to be the customer service. You're going to have to be the accounting. You're going to have to be the picker packer. You're going to have to be the sales negotiator. You have to do everything at the start until you can afford to obviously recruit for those roles. So it's going to be hard, but it's going to be so worth it if you take that plunge. Yeah, 100%, because the rewards come after all Of course, that, you've got like, the risk first. Yeah. And reward, like in terms of monetary rewards, they don't come for years. Yeah. Because if you certainly want to make a success of it, you're going to have to put everything back in. Yeah. As soon as you get any like sort of level of uh, profits or whatever, for the first few years, of course, you're going to have to put that back, back in to expand your product ranges like we did with throws, like we did with bedding, like we did with the named cushions. They all came with time once we obviously had the money there to evolve the brand. I think that's where people go wrong sometimes. I think people see all the glamour on Instagram oh, and yeah. they think, oh, I want to start a business because I'll be like them and I'll make all that money and I'll be fine. And then they're a weekend and they think, oh my God, or they think they're going to get rich quick. Yeah. Like that is not, unfortunately, if you want to be an entrepreneur or start a business, you have to be, as you say, passionate. Yeah. And I feel like, especially in your brand, the passion shown on social media, the people who have good things to say about your business, the products, like just everything surrounding it. And which you've, built like a huge following on social media like God, I think you've got over 60,000 followers have you? 65,000 oh, maybe wow. yeah that's amazing that's amazing yeah and we've never I've done one paid post stop it yeah one sponsored post it didn't do that great so oh my god never done it no a lot of ours um again with consistency it's like you're on a stage there's 65,000 people I want to keep them engaged I want to yeah. keep them looking I don't want them to press unfollow yeah I want to bring them new styles I want to bring them like like new ideas, a lot of, well, every single picture we post is a customer picture or very few are in our showroom. We only have two room sets in our showroom. So we've got uh, offices and there's room sets upstairs. So I'll, I'll use some of those room sets to take pictures. But 
90% of the pictures on my feed are customer pictures. Do you think that works doing yes, that? Yes, 100%. Rather than taking a picture and putting it on my feed of a single cushion, I'm showing you the whole whole vibe, the whole finished product and in your home. You might, a lot of them might be like, I've got that bed. Yeah. Oh, them cushions match that bed. Great. Click, shop, buy. Yeah. Done. So it's that whole creating the overall like feeling like you know interiors it's a lot about the mood and the way that it makes you feel yeah. and the way that it makes you feel if you see like a cozy fro with cushions and in a lovely neutral inviting space yeah. then you can see the whole finished product not just a cushion yeah do you feel like social media does drive a lot for you because i feel like if someone has bought your cushions and posted it, then that drives to your page. Yeah, definitely. It makes me smile so much when I look through our tagged pictures and the people that have taken time, you know, they don't have a home account. Yeah. Not every single one of our customers has a home account, but they take the time to put a picture on and say how amazing the quality is and how how happy they are and how happy it's made them feel. Like to say that something that you've created has is, is actually had an effect on someone's mood is crazy. And going back to the whole hard times and the consistency and it doesn't happen as an overnight success, the things that get you through are the reviews. Yeah. You know, you might not have at the start, you might not have any money in the bank, but you've got those reviews that are keeping you going, that you are delivering a service or a product that people love and, you know, it's going to grow and grow. You just need to give it time. And you always pop them on your socials, which yeah. I think is really important because I think people look out for that because I know whenever I'm looking online, I'm like straight to the reviews. reviews. You do, don't you? If I'm buying clothes or whatever, I always look at the reviews. Yeah, 100%. To so see like about the quality or the fit yeah. or the size. So it's the same with ours. And again, you know, it's great to see all, all the amazing reviews. And I'm the, I'm... I'm terrible for leaving reviews. You know, you get them emails, yeah. don't you? Like, <laughs> please leave you. a review. <laughs> so we have an automatic thing called Judge Me, uh, which is an app built into our website that obviously a week after purchase, I think it is, or 10 days after purchase, they will get that email to it. And the amount of people that do it blows That's my good. mind. That's really good. I just think I, I couldn't be bothered doing it. I, but now people leave me <laughs> reviews. I am far more on it to leave yeah. reviews, especially for like small independent businesses. If I've been to a nice restaurant or, you know, I've bought from a nice, like smaller brand, uh, then I'll always try and go out my yeah. way to give my time and leave a review because that's what drives business. Yeah, That is what helps our brand definitely grow. It's word of mouth. Like I said to you, we don't do any paid advertising. It's all word of mouth. And again, on the reviews or when people Instagram was on um, asking like about advice on styles and stuff, I went round to my friend's house. She had your cushion. My mum's got your cushions. Oh, my dad does windows and conservatories and he was working out of town um, last month and he was explaining, you know, his daughter does this and they were like, we've got her cushions in the front room. And That's my dad amazing. was like, no way. So oh, think like that. word spreads and no, the amount of people that I meet and, you know, I might even be talking to them like, it happened in Manchester in the toilet on a night out. This girl was taking a picture for me. Stop you know, it. those drunken vibes yeah. that are happening again. Oh, can you take a picture for me? My boyfriend's tried it, shit. And I'm in the toilets at the Ivy. And Stop she's it. like, it, I'm trying to get her to take a picture of me. And it must have been like on my Instagram when I tried to take. And she was like, oh, like, are you glossy interiors? <laughs> I was like, yeah. And she was like, no way. Like, That's we bought fun. loads of cushions from you. And then she said her name. And I don't remember every single name. It's impossible out of thousands of orders. But I was like, oh, my God, yeah. Like, I remember, like, I've seen oh your name before. God. So it's crazy how, like, word will spread. No, you just no. need to be patient with it. And yeah, like you've if you've got it. a good product, people will talk about it. Yeah, like, you've done it organically as well, which, like, I think is amazing because a lot of people do struggle to get their brand out there maybe not so organically so to have only done one paid post and to as you say be consistent that's obviously showing now and the yeah. success so I think for people out there who want to do something anything yes it, that's all part and parcel just stay consistent. definitely stay consistent stay true to who you are um and always even if it's negative feedback always welcome the feedback yeah um and it'll only make you like grow better have and you deliver had any negative better... feedback um, not massively, no. Honestly, we're very lucky. We have a very nice customer base. Some people might say they're expensive, but again, that's just personal. Yeah. Personal. It's, <laughs> if we're not in your budget, like things aren't in my budget. Yeah. It's totally different. And it might not be that they might be able to comfortably afford it, but just they wouldn't dream of paying that on a cushion. And I totally get that. But you're not going to get that level of product yeah. at a less price because we don't make huge 
profits on them. They cost a lot to make. Yeah, the qualities. The there. insert alone is twelve pounds. That's before you've got your fabric, your zip, your makeup time, everything like that. So Oh my god. We can tell though because they are weighty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. In a good way. So what does the future holds for the brand then. Where, where are you going? Because you've been to say as well, you brought out dressing gowns as well. Yeah. You forgot, you forgot that big one. Yeah, no, we did that a while ago. That was before lockdown, but it kind of like took off more in lockdown. Um, yeah, because everyone was getting comfy. Yeah. <laughs> so it, again, it's just the uh, talking about like trying to grow a business and any advice for anyone out there. Ours has only grown because at the start, we used to gift products to people yeah. with home accounts because I didn't have a premises at the time. I didn't have a room set. Um, you know, shortly after starting the business, I was back living with my mom. Yeah. I didn't have some fancy bedroom to take shots in. So the only way for us to get this content, which is what sells the product, is to gift products out. So um, we got the dressing gowns in and Lily Lexi had purchased from us before. And I thought, perfect. I've got a relationship with her, you know. Yeah. Again, I've not had to pay her. I just said, would you fancy a dressing gown? Yeah, of course. Oh, amazing. I sent it to her <laughs> and she got a gorgeous, like, in-home Yeah, she shot. looked amazing. And they've sold great ever since the <laughs> photo so it's just about using resourceful tools as well that again you would be saying growing the instagram organically using tools that don't cost anything yeah it's cost me the cost of making the product but it's not cost me five thousand pounds to get an influencer to post something about me yeah you know these people some people might never reply to you yeah that you want to send products to you might never be able to reach the pe- people that you want to um to promote your brand but the ones that do if they like your product then of course they're gonna say yeah yeah would you suggest people just go for it and be cheeky so to speak like to ask people to gift them stuff like yeah because i know some people don't have the confidence oh my like, god what's the worst that can happen like they, they say, say no, no. <laughs> i, I know that, that i've got a really nice product probably nicer than any of the cushions that you've got in your home yeah <laughs> and i'm offering you them for free so i don't care how many followers you've got why not <laughs> exactly <laughs> Now, who's like, so you obviously sent that dressing gown. Do you kind of do that? Do you think that's the best way forward to grow your business? Like, At the people? start, definitely. But I think we're definitely not established brand, but we're becoming yeah, no, that. And are. we've got a loyal, like, customer following. And people talk about it. And, you know, it's consistent every day now. We'll have sales. But at the start, to drive sales or when we've got a new collection then definitely, why not? You know, it's a very resourceful, useful tool. Two of the ones that we work with a lot and we have done since the first month or two, well, yeah, the first month or two of starting is um, Rosie Home Sweet Home. Yes. You know, it's very much in my favour to gift her products because the amount that will sell off the back of that is amazing, but also even more amazing, the the content that she gives me to post on my feed, you know, it cost me thousands to go and rent some fancy hotel room and yeah. or some interior design suite and rent it for the day and have a whole photo shoot. It's a lot of time that she's taken to obviously create that room and do the shot and take so many pictures. So yeah. for what we get as a brand out of it is amazing, far worth more than what it's cost me to send a few products. Yeah. And likewise, I feel like for people who are wanting to get involved in things like that, like you said, she's got a gorgeous home, so she makes your product look even more yeah. gorgeous. So enhances people it. People who want to do it should start like making their home look gorgeous because I feel like people are like, oh, no one's gifting me stuff. It's not all about that sometimes, but I feel no. like people want to be given stuff for free. And I think, well, you need to make your space look yeah. beautiful to get something beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and we don't really do it as often anymore. There's three, four people that will work with and will continue working yeah. with that, again... And it does matter the amount of followers you've got because if if you've got 1,000 followers, we're not going to be seen by that many people and we want the best chance and the best widest audience. It doesn't mean you have to have over a certain number, but, you know, these people that we do continue to work with, they've got hundreds of thousands of followers. So they're, you know, we're tripling our audience by all the new potential customers that we could get that we're reaching from that. But none of them have ever asked me for three free things. I'm the one that approached them. We get messages every single day can I have free stuff can I have free stuff yeah (laughs) yeah from someone that you know might only have a small following like 100 followers I'll have a cushion of you um but you know you have to obviously politely decline because it wouldn't be economical for us to gift everyone I can't believe you (laughs) politely decline I'd be like no I'm not replying to you that's so cheeky so (laughs) we have a select people that we work with them that's because we've established a relationship with them over a few years now very rarely we'll work with someone new it's only people that obviously we've got a working relationship with we're not constantly looking for brand ambassadors yeah because we get enough content from 
um, but our you clients. Said, you have established yourself now. Like obviously at the beginning, yeah. But like now, it's like you've got them relationships you've built, and you yeah. really need that small context with that as opposed to like gifting everyone everyone yeah and you don't want everyone like, to feel like you're giving you stuff no, away either and also i feel like you also know the brands that do it sounds yeah. awful but yeah. when everyone's getting them you're like oh there's yeah. them again do you know what i mean and you're Definitely. like obviously not that kind of brand uh-huh. which keeps like the collection very exclusive yeah. yeah you don't want everybody to be see that a product you pay for everybody's getting it for free no. every single day and why am i paying for it exactly. you know we might not even once a month, maybe once every few months that we might gift a product because they're doing a new room up, the, the particular person that we have a working relationship with. Yeah. Um, but other than that, no. But again, going back to starting a business, uh, whether it be a service like you had Jessica on last time, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I don't know if she's done that, but a great way for other people to do. And you mentioned that you've done free work in the yeah. past. It's about getting your name out there yeah. and you don't have that big marketing budget. So for somebody to spread the word and talk about you and it not really cost you anything other than your time, like our time making the cushions or your time providing a service or a mood board, then it's a win-win. It's a great opportunity and you'd be stupid not to take up on that as a new business. Exactly. As well, going back to as well, I forgot to mention, so you have actually got your own place now. You do sell online your cushions, but you've got... The room set, so how's that going? Because I think that I made that was a fab idea by you. Because as you say, you can make your own little mini sets yeah. in your office. So we had a place um, for the first 12 months. It was really, well, 12, yeah, about 12 months. First 12 months, I just had people working freelance. So they'd work from home. Uh, and I'd go and collect the cushions. Then I'd bring them all back to the garage at my mum and dad's house and I'd pack the parcels. Then I'd get them in my car and then I'd take them to the depot. And it was a very long process. But again, that's how you start the, That's how you start the business, isn't it? Yeah. You always end up doing things the long way around because you might not be able to afford to do it the other way around and or yeah. you didn't even think of doing it that way around. You just constantly head down, like yeah. trying to get through the day uh, and do five people's jobs. So then we eventually got a little unit um, and I employed our first person, well, nearly two years ago now, full time. So we had one full time machinist. So I stopped the whole running around at people's houses and we had one full time employee. And um, then a few months before lockdown, we obviously started growing and growing and it was getting way too small what we had. There was two rooms in there and for the amount of fabrics we had and stuff and the amount of orders going out each day, we had to pray the weather was good to pack outside <laughs> because we couldn't keep the box because the boxes are so big. We couldn't, I wouldn't Stop have the room for the boxes it. inside. So if it rained, it was all, oh, it was terrible. Oh, I anyway, cry. I hate that. Um, lockdown hit. We obviously grew substantially. We were one of the lucky ones from the pandemic because people were at home more wanting to do the houses yeah, exactly. up and just on the phone more, I think, and yeah. being able to find time to find new businesses to shop with. So then we had to quickly move move from the unit we did have to one five times the size oh wow and employed another three members of staff oh amazing so we went from a team of two to five within like two months and uh what we have is like a very big house on an industrial estate it's very random and so it has the downstairs which is all the work and production the packing room the insert room the sewing room oh wow um and then upstairs i've got my office and then we thought well we've got three empty rooms here let's make use of them so then I thought, well, why not do bedroom sets oh, of new, new sets? It's a lot easier to photograph them up there when a we've got new products. idea for the extra space, though, because it yeah. works well for your brand. Definitely. Oh, I love that. Did you feel like coming out of lockdown, like your business, like, obviously grew in that? I feel like, as you say, a lot of people, like, found you. Yeah. Did you grow massively? Yeah. Like, was that your, like... Yeah. Not Pete. overnight yeah, success, yeah, yeah. but obviously after, like, the whole, like, yeah. few weeks of you just doing normal sales and then all of a sudden everyone found you. Yeah. Was that such a benefit to you? Yeah, massively and forever thankful for that, the amount of new customers that we gained. And I remember I was still living with my mum at the time um, and Glossy had been going about nearly 18 months. It yeah. was still very, very new. Um, and we got sales every day, but not like nothing major because obviously we we're still a new business. Um, and I remember coming home and like my mum said to me when lockdown hit, she was worried like that we weren't going to get any sales. Okay. We were watching the news and my mum said, do you think it's going to be okay? Like, you know, and I said, as long as I can pay my staff's wages, I'm not bothered. Like, yeah. I don't need to, I'm not bothered about me. As long as I can afford to keep afloat and pay people's wages and pay my overheads each month, then that's fine. But then literally I think we 
did five times our previous month in the first month of lockdown. That's amazing. I can't believe you didn't think. I, If anything, I'd have thought, no, because everyone's in the home. No one knew at oh the time. It was such a crazy experience of, oh, we're going into lockdown. I didn't really think. And I just thought, what I thought is people might be very cautious with their money. Yeah. Might not be spending on like more expensive items. That's what I thought. Uh, that was my first thought. But no, it was completely opposite. I can imagine, no, because as like everyone was buying. I know it was like at the time, like, oh my God, like, how are we going to survive? Yeah. This, that and the other. But I feel like, and if any, it was opposite because everyone was in the home. So. Yeah, looking at things more, wanting yeah, to change things. Any interior account, I feel, grew. Yeah. So, as I say, people seeing your cushions in people's homes, it's sort of that cycle. Spiraled, yeah, definitely. And um, forever thankful to all of our customers because my mum and my sister both lost their jobs in the pandemic. Oh, wow. And it enabled me, through Glossy's Growth, to give them full-time jobs. Oh, that's amazing. So... Yeah, really, really thankful for our customers yes. and all the new customers that we gained throughout the pandemic because, you know, you saved my family's jobs as well. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so you are an online business. You're in any stores? We've We're in a few new, local yeah. interior stores and also um, another brand called Tech Lifestyle, which are based near Essex. They're um, amazing. Amazing. So I love going. I've not been able to go, obviously, because of the pandemic. But last year, just before, actually, it was the night before we went into the first ever lockdown because me and my mum were eating at Sheesh Restaurant. We'd just been to Tech Lifestyle in the morning. And then because it was so far, I took loads of photos there and had a meeting with them. And then we went out for dinner that night. And then they said, like, they've got to close that night. So that was like Stop the start it, really? of the lockdown. Yeah, that's when I was. That's mad. Yeah, that's when I was last at Tech Lifestyle. So they stock a lot of our cushions. And again, with us talking about working it is online yeah uh, and you know majority of our sales do come from customers just in their homes but we work with a lot of interior designers so tech lifestyle are always working on projects and always sending their own fabrics to us to make up for them oh, um, and they also stock our cushions in store so yeah they're one of our stockers oh, amazing so for anyone who doesn't know you can obviously shop online yeah do you feel like in the future you'd like to be or do you want to stay more online does that work best for you or? um we definitely like to uh maybe go in with a department store oh self Hello. <laughs> Hello. So yeah, there's some some things that we're working on uh, oh, behind amazing. the scenes. Um, nothing's signed and sealed yet, but yeah, we're definitely wanting to go in with a certain department store. <gasps> oh. So hopefully, people can see them in stores like this. this year. This is like a bit of behind the scenes on the podcast. <laughs> be like everyone Heard knows. It here no. TV. Nothing's confirmed yet, but that's definitely one of the goals to get into. I always said when I started the brand, by the time I'm 30, I really want it to be in a department store. Because again, I feel like that's our type of customer. Yeah. Like I love going in Selfridges or Harrods or Harvey yeah. Nicks and getting my makeup. And yeah, I can order it online, but I like to go and see it yeah. in store. I like to go and try it. And then at least in store, they can feel the weight and see the true quality rather than just going off reviews online. But that's exactly it because I feel like yours are like, I'd love to see them in yeah. like, somewhere like that because as you say, the feeling of it. Uh-huh. Online's just amazing, don't get me wrong. And especially yeah. during all this, it's been perfect for your business. You haven't had a brick store to like worry yeah. about. But like, as well, like, I feel like people worried about the high street dying. I feel like possibly not because, as you say, the experience. There's certain to... shops that will obviously, unfortunately, die off that aren't, yeah. don't have a massive social media presence, don't have maybe even a younger customer. Yeah. But it's it's a day out, isn't it, to Selfridges? Yeah. You book in the champagne bar or you book it at lunch afterwards, you go with the girls or you go with your partner. It's more of like a destination. Yeah. It's not just, I'm going to nip there today. Like, you make a, a day of it and it's yeah. where you obviously maybe save your money up for the month to have an uh, yeah. have a nice treat um, so I definitely don't think department stores are going to go anywhere but sadly the standalone stores unless they have a predominant um presence on Instagram and a maybe gifting or doing videos or things like that then I think that they will struggle unfortunately yeah but you'd still like to go in a store anyway. Department store, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Oh, I love that. Um, so on the podcast, we do an amazing segment. Well, I think it's amazing because obviously I made it up. But <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about things that you might think is an absolute show. So we call it the holy show. Yeah. And also things that are a bit of a guilty pleasure. So something that you shouldn't like, but you absolutely love. So, okay. Yeah, take it away. Have a little think about that. So what do you think, like, oh my God, no, hey, it's like, holy show, holy show. Um, Probably the fact that people refer to our products as pillows. 
Because I think there's a massive difference between a pillow and a cushion. A pillow to me is what you put your head on at night and you go to sleep on. A cushion, a scatter cushion, a decorative piece is a cushion. It's not a pillow. Yeah. So sometimes when people like say it or these are amazing pillows and I'm like, it's not a pillow. Stop it. You're like, if someone's tagged you in that on Instagram, you're like, oh my God, I'm not cheering that. So for everyone now needs to know. Yeah, it's a cushion, not a pillow, but it's totally fine. It's totally fine. You're like that fuming. <laughs> it's totally fine. Uh, and what do you think's like your guilty pleasure? What would you say is like something that you shouldn't like, but you probably I do? wouldn't say you shouldn't like it, but the only thing I can think of guilty pleasure, I love going to show homes. Oh, I, yeah, no, I like, do. I, do yeah. I love it. Like just going for a drive, getting a coffee on my way and yeah. having a look and like getting all new ideas and having a look like some of our inspiration and stuff like definitely comes from show homes. Because again, it's providing that hotel value. Yeah, no, 100%. I feel like a show home sometimes is quite hotel-y. Yeah. Do you ever give any of your cushions to um, a show home? I haven't, no. Maybe that's yeah. something that I should do, oh definitely. My God, that'd be Got people going in and out all the time, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. With your little brand there. Little yeah. Leafly. There you are. There you go. New <laughs> idea from this podcast. I love that. Mm. Um, and as well, we answer someone at home's question. So let me get them up now. Um, so... How to know which design of cushion to choose? How to know what cushion to select for like the design of the room? Yeah, okay. So what to base that off, basically, yeah. they've said. So okay. what would you, so if someone sent you their room design, what would be the first thing to choose? So I feel like sometimes when people see gorgeous cushions on your page, mm-hmm. they mightn't feel like that's suited to their room. So what would you think is the first port of call, should we say? to decide on what to go for? Well, definitely reach out to us. Yeah. I mean, I answer messages at 6 a.m 11 p.m any time of day <laughs> always awake <laughs> yeah like my boyfriend hates it but yeah I'll always answer questions no matter what time of day like if you send me a picture of your room that is the best place to go off but obviously a lot of people don't wouldn't think to do that or wouldn't think that that's okay to do that yeah so in terms of if they're just online shopping for themselves whether it be on our website or anywhere else I'd think of most of all like your accessories so a lot of people are wanting to add black in now because they've got a black tv surround feature the headboard's got a black trim around it or they've got a black chair in the corner you don't have to necessarily have to have black cushions but if you wanted to introduce that in a print or piping yeah look at your flooring color does it not match with the bed would you like to bring the flooring color onto the bed yeah that kind of thing um and if you've got a gray theme and you know you're not planning on buying a new bed anytime soon you don't need to buy a new bed to change the whole transform of that room you can just buy a new cushion so I'd say our best sellers at the moment are greyish. So in between the grey and the beige. So you're it's lifting, back greyish, isn't it? You're lifting that heavy, dark or standard silver grey theme and you, it still goes and complements your furniture and everything else in the room, but you're giving it a refresher, lighter look. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'd just look at your base colours and I'd normally always suggest a plain for the back row, print for the front row as a feature. Um, and also to our website shortly, we're adding a sizing guide. Okay. So a lot of the questions we get asked, um, there's a graphic designer working on it at the moment for me, but we're just trying to make it as easy and as nice to look at. Um, so it's took a while, but a lot of people say, I've got a king size bed, what size should I get? Or yeah. I've got a super king bed or what size for sofas? So it's going to be a sizing guide on the website, which should hopefully help customers oh, that's shop brilliant. more as well. Oh, that'll be fun. Because what might fit on a double bed wouldn't be big enough for a super king. It would look lost on there. No, that's perfect because you do different sizes as yeah. well. Like obviously the prints on it, but you offer the different size yeah. options, which is brilliant. Back to your question though, I'd just look at the accessories in the room. If you wanted to pull in a certain feature or a colour, add that into the set somewhere. You don't have to buy our pre-made sets. You can just shop singularly oh, and then go from there. Oh, I love that. And we'll answer one more as well because I feel like we've got time. <laughs> <laughs> Might do a businessy question. Yeah, of course. So this one's good. What made you want to start a cushion business specifically? So what was it about cushions? Um, I think, as we were discussing before, it's those final finishing touches, which I really pre- think that soft furnishings provide, um, make the, the world of difference. So to a sofa or to something else. And it was just the difference that the cushions made in my home before I started Glossy, yeah. the difference that they made made me like I love them I just get excited by them yeah and the look and the feel that they create to a room and that's kind of what made me want to to start that as a business because I just felt like it's a product that I love and I think others would love and I think there's a real need for it yeah 
Well, I've got a question for you then. So, if you wouldn't have started this business, what do you think you would have been doing? Definitely something in interiors still. And maybe I might have just bought and sold products. Yeah. Had so like you an still would have been... Yeah. And uh, my ultimate goal is to get into property. Yeah. Like build and design houses. And obviously that, that's way off. But that's, again, that is still linked to interiors. Yeah. So... Yeah, I would have definitely still been in the interiors field. Oh, love that. So you never give up anyway. No, it might oh. just be something slightly different. Oh. But I do hope that Glossy obviously grows and grows and go, goes on to be, you know, a li- like a, a lifestyle brand that a lot of people have in the homes and oh, it becomes a well-known brand. So well, I think it will be. Hopefully, so. we can only try. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you so, so much for coming on. I really, so really welcome. appreciate it. And if you're not already, make sure to follow Glossy Interiors over on Instagram. So thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me.